and welcome. I'm Farah Khalik and this is Safia Chats with Farah, where we inspire Muslims growth by sharing diverse experiences that will positively charge and transform mindsets to love and appreciate oneself. Before we start, I would like to quickly remind our viewers to subscribe to my channel and listeners do follow the show on whatever platform you're enjoying this podcast on. This episode, I am joined by Adele Onyango. Adele is a Fenian media personality, podcaster, and founder of the Adele Onyango Initiative. She has gained international recognition for her efforts to empower African women and youth and has celebrated and has been celebrated as one of Facebook's 2019 icons of change. She's also after her youth awards. 100 Most Influential Dales Accident for 2019, OK after the 100th Extraordinary African Women for 2018, I'm not a done. And the videos hundred inspirational and innovative women in the world of 2017. And then she's a queen. She's here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I also have to hear here today, Adele. Uh, Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very excited that we are finally doing this. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, I'm very proud of you as well, because I feel like the a time I heard you talk about this and in, in a different or I'm wanting to, to do this. And yeah. um, it's great to see that you've actualized it. I'm, I'm actually good. I'm well. It's one of those days where I'm like, yay, I get to see another day. Because there's some days you're just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I- and I can like this. Those days are just like, oh, it's just three days. Yep. Let's do this. <laughs> yes. Some days you kind of have to take it like one minute at a time, one hour at a time. But luckily, today's not those days. I'm like, it's great. It's not as hot as it was the other day. Then, like, yeah. I love it. It's, it's, it's a cold one in today. And I'm like, yeah. 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 We miss this <laughs> for a bit. And then it's going to be back to heat. <laughs> Yeah, I hope that. Honestly, I hope that. And then tell us a little bit more about uh, your initiative and you know, living if we will. Yeah. I want to know a lot more about it. Yeah, so I'm the founder of Legally to this Africa, which is my last born <laughs> child. The initiative is the first one, and then Legally to this um, is the last one, um, which started off as a podcast. My background is in radio. I was a radio presenter for 10 years in Kenya. And then when I turned 30 in 2019, I was like, I'm done with this. Um, and I kind of like, I resigned some of my notice and then began Legally Clueless as a podcast. And before this, I hadn't listened to any podcast. I didn't know what a podcast was. Um, I thought I was so jaded by the media. The media industry is very, well, traditional media is very... Um, it's a very harsh environment for everyone, um, men and women, but I think women get it much rougher. And I was just like, I'm done with all things media. I'm going into the NGO world. I'm going to save the world. I'm done with your madness and then podcast. Uh, but it's kind of like, I just felt like Africans don't have spaces to share their authentic stories and traditional media decides what's interesting about you. So if I interviewed you, I have decided what I want you to share. You know what I mean? When in reality, everybody has a story that's worth hearing and they should decide what that story is, right? Yeah. So I started Legally Clueless um, around that and we grew so fast and I was just like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? And immediately after that, when we kind of got our footing, um, we launched our video series, which I was very scared of launching. I think anybody who runs anything or creates anything can identify with that because at first you're just like, what if I stop this and it fails? You know, there's all of this, these fears, but it worked out well and then um, in 2021, we went on tour across Kenya. So we went, uh, we did a Nairobi tour, Nakum, Kisumu, Mombasa. 
just kind of like recording African stories and stories about those places. Immediately we got back, we then went on tour to Paris, you know, and that was great because then I got to interview, or well, start, get stories, because it's not only interviews, but to get stories of Africans who are not necessarily East African. These are like from Francophone African countries and hear their experiences and all of that. Um, and so far that has grown to be a new media company. And so we're really centered on amplifying African stories, wellness events. We just had a sold out group therapy session um, this last Saturday. We're launching wellness products soon. And it's like, um, it's still rooted in media, which is my, my love. Um, but it's more, that's just the media. I think the purpose is, um, not to toot my own on, but I think we shoot from time to time. I think I'm a light worker, you know, and I think my job is to help you find the switch to your light. And sometimes helping you find your story is the roots to that. You know what I mean? And so that really is the purpose of Legally to this African. And the initiative, because of the work I do in like amplifying issues that affect African women, we're really centered on um, ensuring survivors of sexual violence get access to free group therapy. Um, so I feel like finally all the work I do is kind of like, you can see gray areas that so they like wellness, therapy, story, Africa, women. <laughs> and so in a nutshell, that's what I do. Yeah. So amazing and so inspiring. And uh, thank you. It's in, in this time and age, wellness is so crucial yeah so important and i love that you're really you know making noise about it yeah <laughs> yeah what did i let no i'm fine i'm fine no yeah no, not just the exactly 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 so and we're all walking around with just so many traumas and kind of like projecting them on each other and we're not even aware of them and i really just think like i don't think we were Whatever your belief system, religious or whatever, I think we were not put on this earth to suffer. <laughs> and say that you like know what I mean. And so I'm always like, one way to truly start living is to start healing from whatever trauma is, etc. That you have, and it's an ongoing process. Like, and it's not easy. It's trust me. I've seen my in my personal life it's hectic, but um. I think it, it unlocks, it gives you freedom to lead and live like once you start intentionally healing and you start realizing, oh yeah, yeah, what I went through as a child, that was really traumatic and I, it's valid for me to feel sad about it. It's valid for me to feel confused about this, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, and I just want that for, for everyone, especially African. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I don't um, oh, we all have that one remedy in, in our childhood, but, you know, all the standouts, I mean, someone mentioned childhood, they're just another letter or another. Yeah. Do you have any such? I had so many, because I was like an imaginative, creative kid who just did the most, like, oh, well. just, just doing the most. But I think one that stands out is there's a day I made popcorn. And I was really young, so I was at the age where I wasn't allowed to use the cooker because, like, in many African homes, the cooker looks like it's okay, but there's, like, one plate <laughs> that doesn't respond to the knobs, you know what I mean? Um, but my mom had left for work. We were on holiday. I wanted popcorn, and I was like, I'm going to make popcorn for myself. Like, I don't care what the rules are about don't touch the cooker. You're not meant to use the cooker. Only um, our house help. We need like an uncle to me is the one who's meant to use the cooker. So I timed when he was gone. Oh no! And I decided I'm going to make popcorn. And then I picked the plate that was faulty. I didn't know this obviously. And this plate you couldn't regulate the heat. It was either all the way off. Oh, that oh, oh, that's why. You know what I mean? Yes. And so. I put the pot on and I did everything right. Like 
This was back in the day. Those were microwave popcorn. And mothers know how to adjust. Exactly. Somehow. Somehow. Yeah. I don't, but I was like, <laughs> I can do this. It's so hard. My sisters were just like, are you so what are you doing? Stop it. But they were like, whatever. So I put the pot on. I have my, my, the, the seeds and the oil. And obviously, because I'm a child, I move from the cooker and I go to play in the living room. Part of me has even forgotten. <laughs> so when I come back, the entire house is engulfed in like thick smoke, right? So I quickly move the sufuria onto a mat and my mom had these beautiful mats that shoot down. And then I can't you now. The mats. Because the super is hot, hot. the mat just I crinkled. I didn't burn myself, but I burned the mat. So now I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to throw this sufuria and everything in it and the mat over the fence. Um, our neighbor, her name was Pat. Oh, so she's not even cleaning all day every day. She had the evidence in her, her back. Her back. Whatever. <laughs> right? The back, if there's no evidence, there's no crime. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so her backyard was just like full of trees. It was like a thicket. Oh, that's so I'm like, am I going to that? No, that's fine. Who's going to find this? And we have other for Sufrian. So I'm running out of the house carrying all the evidence. And right at that moment, my mom is driving back. <laughs> so I'm just like, so do I go back in? <laughs> and I do. Um, needless to say, <laughs> I was busted. Oh. The house is smoky. My mom, I don't remember if my mom bathed me. Cause she had like a different way of, of, of parenting. Um, but I do know I definitely got a tongue lashing. And so every time I make popcorn, cause like now obviously you have microwave popcorn, but it's not as nice as the real one, you know? So nowadays when I make the real one, I always remember. So I never leave the kitchen. I just stay watching it. <laughs> cause I'm like, now I had let it out of doubt, but again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so that, I remember that. I was a mad child. And by the way, let me just uh, say, you absent moms know their sufuria. Exactly. Don't you know that, no. that this is the soup? You saw it. You fell on the mats. Oh, goodness. <laughs> what are you most afraid of as a child? Of the dark. <laughs> I was very afraid of the dark. I don't know why. And even now, I think if only now and I'm 34, um, I went for body talk therapy. And, you know, that was one of the things that came up. And I was like, yeah, I've never understood it because I, I, I've moved into a new house. And when we were renovating it, I remember telling the electrician, I want light switches everywhere. So I guide myself with lights so that I'm never in the dark. And, I sleep with the corridor lights on. Um, I have a little lamp. So when I turn off the main lights in my room, I turn on the lamp. And sometimes it will be on the whole night. Um, but now it's when I'm really confronting it. I'm just like, why? There's beauty in the nighttime. Like when you look at the moon, when you see city lights and all of that. Like, don't let your imagination get to uh, far away from where you're just like these. Over there, so, there is, you know what I mean? But so the dark, the dark. Wow. Wow. Oh, so what was uh, your favorite food here or subjects? Um, when are the best for the year? Um, my best school year or subjects? Yeah. When I was in primary school, none. Like I hated school. I didn't understand. What are we doing here? Why can't you just come for break time? Lunch time, yeah, and swimming training, and then oh, so I didn't get it. But in high school, obviously, you start coming into yourself, and so I loved history, oh, so much, and languages. I loved learning English literature. Um, I loved French. Um, I just, I don't know why I love languages and history. Obviously. With an African mom, you had to do sciences and all that. I never really under liked them. I think I took physics in high school. I ticked it because during when we're picking our subject, there was a boy who said physics is not for girls. And oh wow, get what? 
I'm a girl and I'm taking physics. And then I, I flunked out in two, two weeks. I just went into the church. Anyway, I cannot handle it. Go back to my history and my languages. So history and languages. Those are my favorite. Well, I'm sure you were in the idol of the center. You said, why did you at there? I don't no. know. It's, it was so hard. Uh, Which cartoon favorite did you think of this? This tribe, Geo, was that? Oh my goodness. Cartoon character? I can watch cartoon. I don't know. That is a very interesting. I've never asked that question in my life. Um, I'm trying to remember. Um, I'm out of power. I don't know. It's so sad that like Dee Dee is coming in a mad, but I'm not Dee Dee. I'm just as tall as her, but I'm not a space out. Yeah. Should I tell her? I told her. I know. I know. I know, especially if somebody kills me. When they watch me, they'll be like, but Didi. Oh, but I can't. Okay, you know what? I will say Didi because of height. Of oh, height. But all I'm one, not... she was always, you know, always up to something. She was always doing something. Yeah. Which is yeah. Like slow. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want to insult my intelligence. No, <laughs> no. Right? Love it. Uh, but yeah, Didi it is. Didi it is. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll protect the. The height, the, the height. Man, but now to find them capable of and then the cartoons you're going to watch, uh, there's not many that we can. No, it's a bit too. We can't. Like, even some things are just strange. Yeah. Like, when you go back to watch them, you're just like, what well, we are not like too. It's problematic. Why was that my demons? What's the last thing you had to say? The last game I played. Wow. Oh, I I always forgot. I have this game. It's very similar to like Candy Crush, but it's it's not, not too Candy Crush. But it's not it's not Candy Crush, but it's actually in my help folder on my phone. Because when I feel myself getting anxious about something, I quickly open it and I play. But it's like a fashion it's like a fashion oh, those stories. Not really a story, like you connect points. It's a very dumb game. Like, honestly, it's a very dumb game. Um, but it helps me when I play it, because the challenges you play are very similar to Candy Crush. When I play it, all my attention goes to the game. So whatever it is that I was anxious about, I stop overthinking about it for a minute. So the game is actually in my health folder on my phone. But, but it's really stupid. It's such a stupid game. <laughs> <laughs> but it's deep because it's for yeah. health. Okay. <laughs> I, I get you. I believe. Okay. Oh, uh, policy about each of your parents that you admire. Oh my goodness. So first, both my parents are deceased. Um, my dad died in 2007. My mom died in 2012. And yeah. So for, I talk about my mom all the time she's my best friend and i think i just loved how she met everyone where they are so everyone and my family like as any family everybody's so different but everyone told her secrets that they can't tell anyone else you know and i think that just speaks to her seeing you at for you not as you're a mother or you're this or her coming in with her own preconceived definitions of what she was supposed to be, you know. And so I, I try and do that and kind of see people as yourself, not who I want you to be, who I think you're supposed to be, like erase all of that. So I love that about my mom. My dad, I think what I liked about my dad, he was um, very problematic, I have to say, because they divorced and he was abusive. But with hindsight and age, I'm able to look back and hold him accountable gracefully and say, well, you did some really messed up stuff. Um, but also see that being human means you're not all bad or all good. You're a mishmash of these things. So there's good in him. And he was the life of the party. <laughs> oh, wow. He was the life of the party. And I think um, 
even with his demons, I think there's a part of him that enjoyed community and being with people and, and ensuring people while they were there had a good time. Okay, so obviously um, they divorced and it wasn't like the movie divorces or I got to hang out with him or whatever. No, um, I think if we did get to hang out when I was an adult, I could have seen that part a bit more. Yeah, but yeah, I kind of liked, I liked, I liked that. I don't want to look for in the friendship. Wow, that's such a beautiful question right now for you to ask me because I'm kind of like going through that phase where I've lost very close friendships. And before, I used to think when you make friends in like primary high school, those are your friends for life because as you get older, no one has time to make friends, you know? And I used to even say it, I was like, me, don't have to make jar. I don't have space for more friends. Which in the in hindsight was very dumb because it means you're denying yourself experiences, you know? So it means that when you go to a new country or you go to a new space, you're holding back, right? If I go to an, a conference in Egypt and I meet Farah, I limit our interaction because I'm like, I was already had said. Okay. I'm too old for this. You know what I mean? Um, but now I've realized that I'm open to making new friends. And because of that, I have been very organically finding people who are just aligned. About one thing for me that is so important is you've got to be self-aware. You've got to be self-aware. You've got to be wanting to better yourself. And self-awareness means... You know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know your traumas, you know all of these things. And you're trying to evolve into a more powerful version of you all the time. You know what I mean? And so not many people are courageous enough to do that. And I've just realized it's a pet peeve for me. So I'm like, you're in my space. You've got to be super self-aware. And I also know that it's okay to have two friends, one friend, Ooh. three friends, um, the older you get, uh, that kind of happens. Sometimes not just because to make us out or anything. So it's, it's just life. You just evolve and then yeah. your values become a bit different and it's fine, you know? And so, but for me, self-awareness is like so important. And yeah. That's a day. Yep. And it's so hard for things to be, you know, self Aware, self-appreciating, self-accepting. Self-accepting. And, and you know when you're self-aware, you won't judge others. Yeah. That. And I've learned if you are a judgmental person, I don't hate you because I don't understand where that's coming from. But those are not qualities I want around me. Because again, as I said, I want to see people for who they are. You know, I don't want to be like Farah. If you are a woman of this age, this is what you're meant to look like. This is what you're meant to be doing with. No, I don't want that. I want to, like, tell me about you and see you as you. And so I just don't, I don't vibe with people who are judgmental. It's true. And these are the, the same people who don't understand when you've evolved. Exactly. That's your, you know what that, that's it's, it's normal to normal to change, you know. I just find that old part. <laughs> Hard. No, I, I, it's I, not. Uh, you're, yeah. you're, you can't say the same. You can't. You really change your priorities. Really. Yeah. Um, life will show you many things and you have to adjust for yourself. Absolutely. You know, many people feel threatened by that. Threatened, they'll feel bad. Um, yeah. So now I has uh, an attitude. Yeah. You know, and I'm just there trying to understand. Uh, yeah. You know, but my therapist always tells me, Adele, you don't have to explain yourself to anybody. She, yeah, I used to, I used to be an over explainer. Even for stupid things, I'd be like, so now this is happening you know, because of this, is this, this, this. But now I'm just like, if you have passed judgments with me, it is fine. Then so the it's fine. We are going. You say I'm a thief. I am a thief. Imagine. Keep your things close. Be close. <laughs> 
do that. Yes. I do therapy, that. therapy helps. Therapy helps. Wow. 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 How, how often do you think of couples should help you to maintain a healthy relationship? That's so interesting. Anyway, um, I think, I think it's not even how often. I think you have to have progressive arguments. For the first time in my big age life, <laughs> I'm understanding that there's nothing wrong with conflicts. There's nothing wrong with feeling sad or hurt or angry at your partner. I think what you need to be careful of is how you communicate the feelings, right? And so I've learned that you kind of have to have progressive arguments. So you're not arguing about the same thing over and over and over again. And so if you have an argument and somebody voices, you do A and it makes me feel like this, you know, then the resolution has to be, I'm not, I'm going to stop doing A if it's something someone can stop or, oh, I think there's a miscommunication. I can't stop doing A, but imagine when I do it, it's not it's what you think it is. You know what I mean? And so I think it's not too much of how often you argue, but like, are you arguing progressively or are we just uh, arguing? Amaka, have you been in those arguments? You can't really remember where, what were we arguing about yeah. now? Because now it's just, you know? Fire for fire. Do you remember on 23rd November? Yes. In 1998. <laughs> when you told me. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and I think that's all coming. I'm really, really understanding it's communication. I also face this up with this whole. Yeah. And it's a communication is I used to be that person. I used to be that person. And then not knowing. You know, you're scared. I don't want to lose this relationship if I bring this up. You're questioning your feelings. Maybe I'm being yeah. a, a baby about this. Or I'm full of reacting. But you see, your body stores. The body always remembers and the mind. Then one day, he will just put his mug on the table without a uh, And then you will blow. But you're blowing up for all the things you've kept in. And he's like, I just put a mug on. The you know what I mean? So he's not understanding because he doesn't know all of this back end. So I think a lot of it is communication and just effective communication and progressive arguments. There will always be arguments. Yeah. But like, what's the resolution? And in the event there is no resolution, can we both figure out a way, is it therapy, to find someone to help us get a resolution? Um, and, and that has been very freeing to me. I no longer feel locked in relationships. Um, Please trust and believe this is just a lesson I learned a year ago. <laughs> so don't look at me like I am the, the mecca of all things, but understanding that has made me less timid in relationships and less, um, just like hectic in relationships. Like everything is a crisis. It's not. It's really not. Yeah. Yeah. I say you're more free. I'm not free. Yeah. I'm more free. See, now it's you with that. If they only with that of communication in school. You know, oh, no, they need that. But they not even know as physics. Yeah, they're teaching us physics. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you know, serious life skills. Serious one. Thanks. Anyways, uh, so what, what would you say, or who would you say has had the biggest impact in your life? Definitely my late mom's. A hundred percent. Like, I just feel like um, being seen, I was fortunate enough to have a, a relationship with my mom. I know that's not the case for everybody. A relationship with my mom where I felt seen, you know? So it wasn't the typical African mother-child relationship, which is just like children are not to be heard. You run when the parents... So I never, unless it was when I burnt popcorn, but I never like run away when my mom came home from work or whatever. And I never had to adjust who I am around my mom. I could ask her questions around drugs, around sexuality, around relationships. And so I think being taught that 
it's okay to be you no matter how weird you are and no matter how you don't really fit in in school and whatever is the reason why or rather prepared me for the work that I'm doing. And so I'm really just running my own race and on my own journey because from when I was young, I was shown that that's okay. You don't have to fit in. And so I think my late mom, you know, I really wish people got to, more people got to meet her, obviously very many people did get to meet her, but I wish um, people, more people experienced her because she, she would have impacted their lives. But I'm just happy I got to experience her for 23 years. And, and yeah, I think that's someone who has the most influence in my life. It's so in uh, uh, it's so important to have that relationship with them. Yeah. I think so. Um honestly when I think even the reason I don't have kids right now is I don't know how my mom did it. It's so like and, and I really respect parents because it's such a huge selfless task you're taking on, you know, and um Sometimes I have a friend who's constantly telling me, Olivia, she, you would make the best mom. I'm like, that is, do you know how intentional you have to be? Um, and how healed you have to be before. True. Oh, and I'm just like, you have to be healed. You have to be healed and, or just even aware and be actively working in, on yourself. And I just feel like, where? I'm already struggling with just taking care of me, our five adults. Understanding now, now yes. you know. Yes. And then just do it. And yeah, yeah, so now another <laughs> being. And, and so I just feel like um, because of the good job my mom did, I doubt that I can do the, a good job. So I'm just like, I'm just on the path. Now, enough time to help the issue. Right, yeah. So I think it's very really important because formative years, um, there's the most crucial ones. All the, like when I go to therapy, most of the issues I'm dealing with are from childhood to teenager, you know what I mean? And so it's like, that's such a crucial type. And, and yeah. Adele, whose opinion matters to you the box and your what? Now, mine. It is. Now I can finally say it's mine. Um, for a long time, I did not have boundaries. Um, I didn't have boundaries in my like intimate or close circle relationships. And, and because I thought having boundaries was like synonymous with being me, you know, and it's not boundaries are not mean at all. Everybody should have boundaries. Right. Um, and so in those spaces and it's, I'm not faulting the people, this was all on me. I think I was making decisions in my life from my career to personal life based on what this um, support system would like. I wouldn't if they didn't know, but it was me who was deciding like, I'm not going to do this even though I really want to. I'm going to do this because this is what they would appreciate or they would accept, you see? And so for a while, I wasn't living a life that was truly mine, you know, and it's tiring. It gets so tiring. And then through therapy and a lot of like exercising, I identified that and I was like, what? I mean, woman, a mad woman, what is going on here? And it really, I'm still on that journey of just kind of like exercising that inner voice, that inner intuition and like trusting it and respecting it and saying, no, 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 I want to do this, I want to do it. And really owning my life because it's mine, right? Nobody's coming to save me. Nobody's coming to change things. It's all on me. And, and that's not an overwhelming thing. I think it's a beautiful thing. It's in there. And so finally I can be like, imagine it is my opinion. So I found, I even bounce ideas off very few people. And it's mainly if they have some sort of expertise oh, or I dig their creativity, etc. So it's not even from a position of I'm second guessing myself. I'm like, I think you could add value here. It will come. What do you think about this? Um, but opinions, 
finally. I mean, I do have my days where I'm just like, random person on social media will say some nonsense and it like shakes me a bit because I'm human. But ultimately, it's me. The opinion that matters at the end of the day is mine. Yeah. And then it's really powerful. When yeah. You don't realize it, but it's really powerful. For a uh, family, what do you want to do with your update of the season? Eh? Yes. I'm here in that and I'm like, and I was there, man. Eh, hey, people pleasing like a man woman. And now I'm just like, and it's tiring. It is. It's tiring. It exhausts your battery. Yeah. Yeah. And then the boundaries yeah. so important. Yeah. Hey, this is my session. It's a therapy session. <laughs> Adele, what would, you, what would be your intro song? My intro song? Yeah. Wow, so many. But let me tell you, okay, over there, like, uh, I've been accused by someone close to me of, like, playing the same five songs over and over. And I'm like, whatever. If they're good, then we must be at them over and over. Um, I think, um, okay, can I say two? Come on, the intro is long. Okay. And I'm even like walking slowly. All right. Okay, so the first song is um, Raylon by Papa Wemba. I love that song so much. Um, I don't know. It just like does something for me. Um, and the second song is, I don't even think it's a song because it's like seven or eight minutes long. And it's like, by one of my favorite artists is Erica Badu. And the name of the song is Out Out My Mind Just in Time. And it's like how it's how it's created. It's like it's three verses or three stanzas. And she's kind of like going through a situation where she's being I think the first sign is like I'm an a recovering over lover, something like that. And so, again, like most people, please, like, you should, I'm going to send it to you. I hate to and so, um, just doing the most in this relationship. And then the second verse, she's coming to and just being like, the only person I can blame for that is me, and that needs to change. And then the third verse, she's introducing her new self, you know? And I always listen to that song, and I, it just, Almost like I identify with that as my yeah. life of like just going through those chapters. And now I'm at the third stanza or the third word. And so that would definitely. Be, oh, yeah. And yes, yes. It's definitely a weird song. I listen to a lot of weird music. And so on road trips, please don't listen to me inside of the music. He will know no song. <laughs> but those two songs, um, I find them very calming. You send them. Yeah, I will. Especially the Erica yeah. one, I will send that to you. Yeah. I, I'm also a huge of uh, listening to me. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then where you are? No, not to. How you have to read the lyrics? You know, uh, we're not ready to listen to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I'll send you. Listen to so song. Yep. Oh. Nice. Oh, uh, which was the first one to you ever attended? First concert I ever attended. Oh damn! I'm trying to remember. It was probably like a private Lafiki Zulu um, concert. They're like this group from South Africa. They're still big, and they were really big back in the day. And my mom was invited to the South African embassy for something. And she's like, come with me. And I remember I was like, I don't want, I don't want. And I've always loved African music. I don't want. And I was so irritated because I was like, so stay home and watch movies. It's like, oh, I'm going to, so boring. Then when we reached, I was like, what is all the, oh, me. You know, so it was, it was a nice, intimate concert. I mean, there were many people. Um, and she was just laughing because she knew they were going to be there, which is why she, she took me. And... I loved it. I was just so, like, blown away. And you know, this was back in the day when we didn't, I think Facebook was just, like, starting, you know? And so we didn't get to see our favorite artists unless you went to a concert. Yeah. More so if they were not Kenyan. Where were you going to be there, you know? So I was just, like, starstruck. 
this is no time I'm breathing the same air. You know? Um, so I remember that. That was probably the first one. And then we, there's a time we went for a Shaggy concert because we were wanting so cute. Um, was it like my early concert? Yeah. Yeah. And this was the karaoke song. My karaoke song. Which week? It would definitely be. Oh, okay. I'm going to pick one that right now I've rediscovered, which is Shake Your Bum Bum by Saudi <laughs> Phil. I don't know where that song disappeared, and then my, my phone just rediscovered it. Oh. And I was driving, and I realized I know all the wrong <laughs> lyrics. Even the, you know, just the background vocals. Wow. Right. How do I know all of them? And then my mom is just like, Shake Your Shake Your. <laughs> Oh, no. So, because I've just recently rediscovered it, it would definitely be that one. Your name, I think it would be Isabella. Oh, man. Okay, so slow song. Yeah. I am not a son, I am an old son. Yeah, I'm so good. That's a bit. What's always in your pocket or purse? What's always in my pocket or purse? Oh, lip balm. Lip balm. Lip balm or headphones? Well, headphones not in my pockets, but like in my purse. I don't like walking around malls without headphones on. Like I will, if I get to the mall and I don't have headphones, I will leave and I'll be like, I've come back another day. Oh, I, I don't that? understand it. I, I don't know. I, I feel calmer in crowds when I have my headphones on. When I don't, I'm just on edge. I don't know. I don't get it. And lip balm. Ooh, yep. that's interesting. Yep. Wow. That's interesting. And it, that is the commotion that really has to you. Yeah, or just like crowds. Or maybe I'm awkward in crowds. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I'm not really, I think that I joined this Australia at New York. No, I think in a box of fish oils. How much is oil? And is that oil the healthy one? I'm not the one that's was man. No, that's it. I don't understand it. Yeah, in your head. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so interesting. Um, uh, uh, we normally say a number to all our phones, you know? Uh, yeah. In the in sense of none of that, you know, a force to refer to the ball that they have. Yeah. You know, especially uh, in Hennessy, we have uh, a phone day. What are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what are you doing? You all had, uh, like, what number had you say that? The weirdest man. It's not in a menu. There's somebody, and they're actually a Kenyan artist. And I've not changed it because I can't remember why I saved them as that. And they're really nice to me, so we don't know, so I'm not going to say their name. But I saved their name and don't save this number. And I don't know why. Why would I do that? I don't know. I really don't know. <clears throat> No, I hold all your artists should judge come to you. And right? And I was just calling you. But I'm like, I'm not changing it until I remember what happened the first time we met. Because this is unlike me. Because normally it's like, don't pick up. It's really me so we just bad. Stage over to this year. But don't save this number. I'm not like so specific and what's going on? I don't know. But that's the weirdest number in my in my phone book. And they're so nice to me, even. Anyway. And then, I don't know. Uh, it'll be weary. We're not all one day, weary. one day of that truth will come back to me. Um, how has it changed as maybe to since? Is it going to be through this? Oh my God. I think we really underestimate how the work we do changes us. Especially when you finally start doing the work that's your purpose. And so for me, I've recorded over 200 African stories in different countries. Mm -hmm. So people from different communities than I've ever experienced. And so I underestimated how that work expanded me, you know? And I began to see life as being something that can be so dynamic and not just this one way of how we've been brought up or whatever. And I just so much started to change, you know, 
you start feeling like you don't belong in the spaces you were in before because now you've been, and I call it expanding. It's just expanding. It's just yells. And then the second thing is like when you build something that was in your mind and you see it growing and growing and in, in business, um, that also expands you because now you start feeling like there's nothing I can't do. You know what I mean? This gives you a boost. It gives you a boost. And so you start to, in, you know, in different quarters of your life, maybe there's somewhere you had settled or there's somewhere you had reduced yourself. You start going to the versions of you like, hey, get up, look what we built. We're actually a big deal. We're actually like powerful and all of these things. And so I think it just expanded me to see a worldview path my own. And it's also expanded me in the sense that I've remembered how powerful I am. And I'm currently <laughs> stepping into my power right now. Um, yeah, that's what I feel. I feel like I'm actually stepping into my power. And, and I couldn't have done this without any great coolers. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. And I love to see. Thank you. It, you don't know that Adele, that you're inspiring. I'm lots of people and I, yeah, and then so it in that. I, I just will watch you and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Know, I want to be that for a minute as well. We're all going to step into the powerful buttons yes, of our thoughts. And I think it may not make sense when you study your show, but you keep doing it and you just keep trusting it. Yeah. And if it's truly your purpose, something happens. I, I can't even explain it. Inside, something turns on and you're just like, yup, this is what I'm meant to be doing. This is a powerful version of me. I have expanded, you know, and it's quite magical. I love that you mentioned that uh, something just happened. When I, I was shooting the first um, few episodes, I was so... Yeah. 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 We were all hungry. Yeah. Really, that was... And my mom was just there. Do it, do it, do it. Don't think about it, you know? And nurse is all this. She was, she would just text me. Are you okay? Are you okay? Oh, bless her. So, you know, and I was like, yeah, I'm just for this. I'm fine. Yeah. And then you know, that night, uh, I was using time. Yeah. Number one. But that night, I was so happy, yeah. content inside, and I'm like, no, I want to do this. Exactly. You know. And when I don't know, you know. Yeah. Wow. I'm like, I want to do this. Yeah. And then automatically, and you realize something switches on, you know, so now I'm talking to people. And my mom is just like, you talk so well. Yeah, you know, right. I was really timid and really shy. Yeah. I was really introverted. And I'm like, mom, I'm literally having a conversation with this person. I imagine. Spoken to them so much. Yeah. I'm like, this is hi, hello, hi, hello. And I met them for the first time, and I'm seated down with them. One hour and they're toughening me. Yeah. You know? And she was like, and they say, you know, when you are bored, you know, I just really get to tell that Jesus. Yeah. Uh, when you find your purpose at whatever age, um, you a lot makes sense. Yeah. A lot of your life journey starts to make sense. It's yeah. So, it's true. It does. Like things just, the cards now in your head are only in the right. Align. Yeah. 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 <laughs> By the way, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And yeah, please just follow your passion. Just do what you love to do. Yeah. And it's, your passion is yours to understand. Yes. You need to stop explaining your passion. Like, it's not for anyone else. Like, stop it. Does that. Just stop it. Because people will project their own fears onto it. People may not understand it. So you just do it. You know, and anybody you need to help you, to help you, you tell them, come help me do this. They don't have to understand the bigger picture. Cause it's not theirs to understand. They have their own bigger picture to understand on their own time, you know? And so I think we spend too much time trying to explain. Trying, trying to find a day. Yeah, just our do passion. It. Yeah. Just don't do it. You just do it. You're the one who needs to understand it. Yeah. Thank you. I got you. Adele, do you find, uh, what's fastest in your nice lifestyle? Um, genuine connection. Yeah. I finally allowed 
genuine connections, the people I have genuine connections with, to be there for me. And so it's the first time I'm like, oh, this is why this thing of importance. You know, we're not an island. And people who won't judge you, who will, I don't know, I've just received kindness and grace that is priceless. And then it, or yes, the, and actually allow someone to be there for you. Because, you know, someone can not be there for you and you are just, which is me. That's, you know, I'm like, I got this. And the woman, I don't need nobody. Yeah. And, and, uh, which is great. I think in, in, it's wonderful. But I think we also are uh, creatures that thrive in community. And so I've had people who don't want anything from me show up for me. And I think that's priceless. I genuinely think that's priceless. And so for me, that's my lesson. Well, one of my many lessons this season is just like, there are people who want to be there for you. There are people who are loving for you. There are people who see you. Um, I used to go to my therapist's office and say, nobody is there for me. Nobody cares. And she used to be like, correct that statement. Say the specific names of the people we want to be there for you and aren't there. But don't say nobody because you've told me this person is there, this person is there, so you're lying. It's not nobody. It's these ones who you were like, oh, I want you to be there for me, but you do have people. And I think it's easy to forget that. Yeah. But that's right, to me. And, and, and as humans, I don't know why we are always focused here on who's not there. And not who's there. Who's there? Yeah. And, and when, when you, you look at who's there, there, like, honestly, it's like, I got a call from uh, two people. Um, one of them, the f actually, they've been calling me often. David Narivi, he, he does amazing work in, in the creative space and has been doing for a while. And he, he just calls. And he's like, I'm just checking up on you. Are you good? I'm like, oh, actually, this, this doesn't happen. The next hour, take your time. I'm giving you a week. I'll check him on you in a week. And in a week, he calls. Are you okay? Um, sends me a message. Are you okay? Um, there's a friend who sent me a care pack to the middle of, I literally live in the middle of nowhere, like, you cannot find me. And she found me and sent me, like, a care pack of all my favorite things, my favorite tea, and I asked her, how did you know this is my favorite tea? I've never told you. She said, oh, I scrolled on your Instagram, and I kept going. I knew you liked tea, but I didn't know which one. And I knew at one point she must have posted it, and I did, and that's how she found it. And so it's just like, they are people ready to be there for you. You have to be open to admit your human and frail in some woman so that they can be there for you. Yeah. She's for, yeah. To find your favorite tea. Right? Wow. Which is hyper disgusting. In case, Farah, you want to send me tea? No, Dad. Oh. Right, so well, how have you changed? Um, how has the quality of your diet changed? Um, is this something that you've done? Yeah. <clears throat> is this something that has improved your quality of life? And what's it that? Therapy. Oh my goodness, therapy. I feel like I have two feet on the ground like this. Wow. So if things are going helpless, Delta, I'm like this. Yeah. I'm literally like this, and I feel um, it's really therapy and the, the work that I've done. Because you can go for therapy and not do the work, and you'll just be wasting your money, and you'll move on and say therapy doesn't work. You will also have to do the work. And last year was so hectic for me. I was doing, first, at a point I had two therapists. Then, with one, I was doing weekly sessions. Weekly double session, right? Because I was like, me, this life is lifing too fast. I need sanity. And um, that work paid off. Barra, that work really paid off. And I think it's, I'm not the same person I, today, which is what, 2023, 
that I was in 2021 even. And this is a completely new password, you know? And so everything changed. After I did that work, my quality of life changed because I understood boundary. I understood who I am, what I want to do. It was so clear what I needed to do even with my business after therapy. My purpose became clearer to me. Um, I became more courageous, more settled in my voice and who I am. And but then your quality of life just improved because then you understand life, you know. And even the bits of life that we don't know, you're like, it's all right. Me, yeah, I'm not the person not to eat it. So I don't know that stress. You know what I mean? Um, so I actually need to therapy, and that's why I work so hard to ensure that therapy is accessible. South African then stops being a luxury because it's a necessity. It is. Yeah. It is. Wow. Well, Adele, um, what, what, what was what moment that you felt? Tell it if you so. Oh, when I got this, um, is I think thought about myself when I got this house? A year I, is it one? <laughs> um, I think when I made a decision to honor what I've always wanted, but always thought I didn't deserve. So the reason I say this house I moved out of Nairobi, I'd always wanted to live where I live, but I just thought that's not for people right now, you know? Um, I've always wanted the lifestyle that I have, and it's not a tips of wealthy lifestyle for carries that's coming to me, please, they're all struggling. Um, it's more on shifting my life from city to farm life, to slowing it down, to intentionality, to self-love in the sense of even what I eat what I tell myself, the spaces I allow myself to be. So all of those decisions, I think I'm most proud of when I actually, you know, you invite yourself on AGM and you're like, my friends, the way we're moving is not, not sufficient. And so for me, the proud moment is when I said, okay, that stops. And now I'm going to honor myself, you know, and, and I'm going to do it in an efficient, smart way. And I've just never looked back, you know, and so... I'm most proud of that because most of the time we think we don't deserve a lot of things. Yeah. So we don't even try to, to get them. We don't push ourselves. Um, yeah, and, and, and we don't take care of ourselves. We don't honor ourselves, you know. And so now I, I think I'm very proud that I, I've woken up. You yeah. already you mentioned that uh, we feel that we don't deserve a lot of things. Yeah. I remember something... Um, I think I heard it somewhere, or I read it somewhere, I can't remember. But um, they were saying that um, you should, don't be afraid to ask to what, like when you're playing in your blood, um, <coughs> ask for that thing, be audacious. Because sometimes when I, I will give you, and I just need to, yeah. oh, John, I think that's God, for him, nothing is impossible. Yeah. So, why are you, you know, I was afraid to ask. Yeah. Don't. And to say it out loud. Yeah. Until you're comfortable with it, you know. You know, and that's a start. Yeah. You don't want to say it, even your players. Yeah. That I'm sure if you must have played um, to, to live there or something. Yeah. That's when it really hits you like, no, I want this. Yeah. You know? And it's why not? not? Yeah. It's big. Yeah. It's like, it's why, why, why not? not? Like, I, why do, why not? Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes I don't know, that's a bit too much. Um, so <laughs> yeah, but you see, it's also society thing. Like, society conditions us to reduce who we are. Reduce. That's too much for that. Uh, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, me, I'm not interested in reducing who I am. I'm not walking to each room. Like, who I am in my totality. Um, and I want to live this life as much life, like I want on my deathbed to be at 0.01% life left. You know what I mean? I do not want to go with unlived life. And so it's just me saying, I want this. How can I get this? And understanding I am deserving of it. 
You know, I'm valid as I am in totality, not in a reduced version. Yeah. Adele, and you look into the mirror. Do you love what you see? Finally, yes. <laughs> it took me a while. But before, I used to be like, I can't my legs at two. Or I need to, I mean, I am trying to put on weight, a bit more weight, but that's because of health matters as well. Because because of my height, I have to be a certain weight or else I'm considered underweight, right? And it's very hard for my body to keep weight. So um, still in line with self-care, I'm like really intentional about my meals. I'm just like, have you had lunch today? No, I forgot. Well, you know, um, but when I look in the mirror, I am finally okay with who I am. And what I'm not okay with, that is actually a health thing. I'm like, okay, we need to bring in a specialist to help with A, B, C, D. That's also an act of self-love. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, I kind of, and my body, I feel like my body has carried me through battles that people don't even know. And I'm just like, this thing is a force, guys. <laughs> like, this thing's a beast, you know? And so I'm just like, eh, look at that. I'm finally at home in my body, and, and I think it's been a, hey, I'm 34, a long time coming. Yeah. One so much. Yeah. Beautiful to me. I love when people tell me about that their bodies didn't love them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but it's intentionality and just understanding. There's no one way to define beauty. There isn't. Beauty is diversity. That's what it is. So, how, however different you look, However, um, not like what is pushed on you by society, you look, hey man, you are beautiful and your body is pop. It's cutting you through things, man. I know. Pandemic, even. You know. I, 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 I remember this quote and I like, I like to uh, perceive it in a different way. So they say beauty is in the eyes of the whole thing, right? Yeah. The I I like the series in the way that God is the one who created us. Mm-hmm. So just in that thing, He was creating us. We were in His eyes. Yeah. So now imagine the view that yeah. you have of you. Yeah. So God would now have an alchemy view. Yeah, exactly. So and in, in His eyes, you are yeah. a damn little this amazing yeah. human, you know, and He created you. Yeah. Just the way that you are. And I think. Ugly is, is a is a human construct. It doesn't exist. Like, what are you saying? Because what is ugly? What is that? Because if I ask 10 people, they'll give me 10 different definitions. So what are you saying? You know, and so I think society has done a number on us and you have to be very intentional in unlearning. Unlearning that, yeah. What's your favorite part of your body? My favorite part of my body... I think I like my eyes. Oh, I think I like my eyes. I only recently was so like, I have like, uh, when we were younger, they would say, um, is this Gololi? Watch a Gololi. I don't know. I thought, yeah, that's cute. Like, I don't know. I don't think you sound like you're insulting me, but I think it's a compliment, you know? Um, cause like eyes are so, um, so I really like my eyes. Um, and I like, I love my smile. I love my smile because it's, I oh, I've never faked a smile. Did you know? You can't do it. I can't. And it's so effortless. I'm just like, from the came out of my mom's womb, just like, I'm here. So I, I love my smile. A couple. Wow. I love, uh, I also heard that when, when I hear that, I ask the question, there's a lot of different answers, but no, I love it. I just... Really? Yeah. And I also love my eyes. Yeah. yeah. And I notice, I think it's because I notice eyes, people's so, eyes a lot. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh my God, I like it. And I like, like, I think people have the, all eyes are beautiful. It's just like, I don't know, I really like eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think for honey, and when I see you, your smile shines in your eyes. Oh, it does? Yeah. yeah. And you can tell when I'm sad from my eyes. Your eyes? Yeah. 100%. Um, 
What is this the title of this chapter of your life? Awakening. Uh, are you? Mm-hmm. I think I'm going through like an like a serious deep awakening. And so I'm I'm very excited to come out on the other side and meet the Adele on the other side, but it's it's definitely an awakening that's happening. And how how does Adele take care of herself? Oh my goodness. Now First, I talk to myself like I would my love out. I soothe myself. Even if I've made a mistake, I'm just like, it's okay, my man. It's okay. Like, you're human, son, babe. So, we know um, I, I, I've really learned to make that inner voice a bit kinder. You know, it was nasty before. It's just like, he said, hey, yeah, you're this or whatever. Now I'm just like, no, we ain't. You know, and so. That's important. I think I've also really started understanding the spaces I put myself in, so I'll never put myself in a physical space that doesn't honor who I am. And if I don't want to do something, I'm not doing it. Number one priority in my life is making sure I'm comfortable. Well, physically, yes, that's important, but like that my mind, my my spirit, everything is comfortable. And so even business-wise, events, if I just feel like that's a space that's not going to honor me, I will not come, okay? And I will say, no, I cannot make it. And so that's important to take care of my mind and honor myself. And then the last thing is um, obviously the therapy, which huge, huge believer in that. But also I'm careful now what I put into my body. Oh. And before I wasn't, I was like a lazy eater. Um, like food was just an inconvenience. Those that kids who is at the table for ten hours, you know. Wow. But now I'm like, dudes, this body needs fuel. Where is the food? You know, if something is not healthy for you, it gets out. Please, obviously you have a few guilty pleasures here and there, but I'm now very like aware, yeah. like what am I putting into my body? You know, and so. I've never done that. So that's, that's a new thing. That's, that's just coming. Yeah. Are there something that uh, you wish to accomplish a bit for the button? Oh. Oof. And how much of it hurt you that? I think I want to step really into my power. I think I'm like at 40%. Yeah. I'm not yet there. Like inside, I'm just like, oh, it's so bad thing. And you know, you're human, so you still have insecurity. But like... It would be sad if I go before hitting even like 80%. Yeah. And so um, right. that's what I want. Adele had a warning labeled. What would it say? Um, easily blocks you. <laughs> so come correct. Oh, my block. Wow. I block and I keep moving. Wow. So just come correct or else, yeah, and you'll be out of my space. Define for that. I need to do honor. Don't. don't. You need to honor me. Mm. If you're in my space, do not dishonor me. Do not not see me. Um, do not. Yeah, I think honor. And on my end, I will communicate to you how I want you to honor me. And if you don't, that's also okay. Lock, but lock, don't block. Lock, lock. My aunt always lost it. She told me that I'm that. But I, you can be that person. That's okay. Everyone's different. Yeah. But then be that person. Oh, but then I craft role. Yeah. So I block wow. very quickly. But I always tell you why I'm blocking you mm. before I block. Yeah. Do you love yourself? A hundred percent. I do. I do love myself. I love that. Yes. Wow, we are almost nearing the end. Now we're going to play a small name. Okay. Never have I ever. Okay. Have you played it? Uh, I'm sure I was encompassed, like, as a drinking game. Uh, Don't have drinks, so this is safe. This is safe. We have hot cakes here. Okay. So if you have, I want you to take a bite. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay, see where we go. Never have I ever joined a pyramid scheme. If you have, you take the bite. Yeah. I 
Ethan, I'm not in. I don't even really let go of my. I mean, you can't be con. I can't. No, I mean, I've been conned of time. Huh? Where somebody just wasted my time. But money is very hard for me to part with. But, wow. Yeah. And that's not an invitation to other uh, to call my people as be like, eh. <laughs> then to accept it. No, no, no. Just leave me alone. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Never have I ever gotten stitches. I have I gotten stitches? No. Imagine, I've broken or cracked my ankle, but that didn't mean stitches. Yeah. Oh, oh. Never have I ever been Christmas Caroline. Never have I been Christmas Caroline. So, like, from House of the we seen in the movie. Or, well, I don't know down here. I think yeah, it's been shot. In church, right? Yeah. Christmas is very important to all of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so i uh, so yay. So you have I'm so yummy. I might lie. And they'll say, Yeah, I have so I can kiss it. Never have I ever lied on my dating app the fire. I've never been on, on a dating app, guys. So imagine. Oh I don't know. Maybe I should just join. Because it's like a a mister right to pass it. No. What's the thing? Tinder, there's Tinder. Bum, is that Bumble? I think that was a safe one for women, if I'm not wrong. I've never been. I've never been on. Wow. Yeah. So I'm boring. Yeah, Let's try it. Yes. <laughs> we'll come back and answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> never have I ever trust us. Oh, I have. <laughs> when I was in high school, oh, okay. and someone's dog was setting <laughs> in my friend. Hey, anyway. Mm-hmm. Good time. Hey, good said, Never have I ever disliked something with a cop. So, maybe chat? What was the one dish you were like, what the hell was I even thinking? I don't remember, but I burnt it. Oh, wow. And then I just moved like it was not burnt. And people are like, it's. Uh, but a smoky thing. I was just like, yeah. no, no, I think. I burnt it. There you go. I burnt it. Uh, Oh wow. Never have I ever gone to a party I wasn't in my to. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Already I hate party. Oh. Like you don't invite me, it's a good time. I'm just like I get to stay home. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I've never oh, well. to, I've never mm-hmm. crushed a but a uh, party. Alright, this or that. Moon and stars or sunrise and sunset. Oh, sunrise and sunset. Those are always good. Huh? There's a quote that says, a sunset is proof that even endings can be beautiful. And I've always found that. Yeah. Some wow. I've senses. I love it. No shade to the moon and the star. Oh, it's cute. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Final uh, segment. I'm going to ask you a question. And uh, based on your answer, I'll read you what's his name. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. So, what's your favorite animal? <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, cool. Yeah, elephants. Elephants. Okay. Um, elephants are no longer alive. Uh, what's your second favorite animal? Second favorite animal. I don't know. I I kind of like dogs. But I'm like, I just don't, I see other people with dogs and they're so much more loving. So I'm like, does this mean I don't love dogs? Because I'm not like throwing up the ground to them. But um, no, it probably wouldn't be dogs. I like birds a lot. And I'm where I move. The birds really like my house. So they come into the front room. Um... One made it into the house, Whoa. and then it's scared. I'm scared. I'm oh. like, what are I can't doing? carry you out. I'm just going to break my wings for being run. So I like birds. Not a particular bird, per se, but they're always these tiny little, yeah. Guys, um, okay, birds are not so hate of them, too. But they're, no, no, no. They're the, the humans eat them all. What's going on? Okay, I would, okay, then I would stick with dogs. I so number three dog. Yeah. All right. Um, so the first animal, elephants, 
It is how you see yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, the second uh, animal, uh, birds, is how others see you. I can see that. Yeah. And then the third animal, that's how you really are. Oh, I'm a doggy. Yeah. That's cute, though. <laughs> that's nice. I think that's true. That is. I think that's true. That was, I, I, even if when I say you're like, there's just this, you know, flesh yeah, uh, there. Definitely. You know, you're always out and about and here and there, do you yeah. get to hear about a dog who's fear, a dog who's dead, oh. Yeah. And then you see yourself as an elephant, like, you know, I yeah. think that comes as you now really yeah. come into yourself. Exactly. Like, you know, like, I'm still who I am. Yeah. I love that. And, That's and, and, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, uh, fucking interesting. Right? Oh, wow. Oh, that was fun to the end of our Thank you so much. This was so wonderful. I've never had an interview like this, and you're doing such a good job. Thank you. Yeah. It's so easy to talk to. <laughs> you can, like, <laughs> siphon all my secrets out. <laughs> uh, but I'm really, I'm really... First, I'm grateful, so thank you for having me. And then the second thing is I'm very proud of you. And and so this is this is such an important platform. So keep at it, because you don't know how important it is. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. And it means a lot. I'm new. Uh, honestly, I was a bit nervous to do that. I'm literally down. I'm so excited. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there was an inspiration to the end that we... You don't know, but that's even the strength. I'm like, I am doing it. You yes. are. You're doing it. You are. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any also, thank you for tuning in right. and watching. This episode of Sasuke Chats with Clara was not sponsored, but it could be. Drop me a line and let's talk. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the show, please share it with others. Post about it on social media, leave a rating and review, and you can also tip me on my coffee page. As always, all the relevant links will be in the show notes, and for our viewers, check the description box. This has been Farah Khalid, and remember to love you always.